Hello everybody, here we are today and we're going to be doing a season preview over the Carolina Hurricanes, talking about what the season could bring for the Canes. So before we get started with it, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or hockey, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get on into it. So last season proved to be another good year for Carolina as they finished with 111 points and were battling it out for a fourth straight division title in the Metro. They would finish second and the team that ended up beating them for that top spot would be the side that they faced in the second round, that being the New York Rangers. New York won the President's Trophy, and when the Hurricanes finished second in the regular season, kind of foreshadowed what would happen in the playoffs as they ended up losing to the Rangers in the second round. So with an early exit being earlier than what they wanted anyway, being kind of the start of a disappointing offseason with a lot of guys leaving, kind of wonder what's going to happen for the team going forward, as I think the fans are going to be looking at this and saying, is this season specifically going to foreshadow what our future could look like? So with that being said, what are some storylines for Carolina heading into this season? So the first storyline is going to be how sharp is the decline? Looking at the Carolina Hurricanes, they've been one of the league's best teams over the past six seasons as they rank third in wins, and they have played at 109-point pace in that time. They have been a mainstay in the playoffs. They've won three division titles. They have had two deep runs in the postseason, and have just been a team you've expected to possibly be a threat year in and year out. But they had an offseason that wasn't very kind to them as they lost guys like Tavo Teravine and Jake Kinsel and Brady Shea. Now, I'm going to be honest, they probably did expect to lose some, if not most of the guys that we saw, as well as some other names ended up leaving, but it's still not fun. They wanted to keep this team together because they've been able to have a long and sustained period of success, but it's just very hard when you have a team that's got a lot of depth, and we knew, like Jake Kinsley, could have been very well a rental, as we expected. But anyway, they have a lot of pieces that are gone. They're going to have to try to figure out how to be competitive once again, as they have set the bar for themselves very high. Now, I think one of the good things about this team is Rod Brindamore is set for themselves to be the coach and you don't have to worry about the drama about whether or not Rod is going to be gone, if he's going to be going to a new place, so that's good. But at the same time, too, like I've already talked about, this is a side that relatively often has been a team that's been able to be in the contention for the President's Trophy, and this year, I think it'd be hard to imagine them hitting 110 points for a fourth straight season, and you kind of wonder how much of an uphill battle is this going to be. I do think that the NHL media could have a story to right here if they go off to a slow start. As Canes, I remember the last season we're able to have like first 30 games of the year where they started off slow and it wasn't really great because when we were talking about oh is Rod gone are they going to miss the playoffs a lot of things that were in the way so we don't want this decline to be too sharp where they go from 110 point team to a team that drops into the high 90s or dare I even say low 90s and then the second storyline is talking about whether or not Brent Burns can get the job done now Burns is an established NHL defenseman as he's played over 1400 games in the NHL and has a Norris trophy two seasons with over 25 goals mind you as a blue liner but there's still some carving to be done if you are the Carolina Hurricanes and what you're hoping for him. Kind of interesting though because it's like walking a tightrope. You don't want to be too reliant on Burns, but at the same time too, you know you probably need to be, at least in the short term, you don't want to have to have a guy that is like 39 years old being a top pairing guy for you. But this is a spot the Canes are in, but I don't think it's really that big of a deal. He is a UFA after this season, and I really see Carolina having the opportunity to maybe have this work for another year or two, saying, Burns, do you want to play? Do you want to work on a deal? Do you want to play on a team that is still expecting to be relatively competitive? And that's where I think this is kind of a good middle ground for both sides, as Burns probably isn't looking to, you know, get a five-year deal for $40 million or anything like that. But at the same time, too, understands that if he still wants to play, this could be a really good environment for him. Now I will say, a lot of people are probably wondering how effective he can still be, as this is a guy that has a lot of low danger chances, he doesn't score a lot of goals like he used to anymore, and is a guy that got about half of his minutes on the power play, but on the flip side of that, I kind of want to circle back to the fact that this is a player that was second on the team for goals, assists, and points among defensemen, Brady Shea being gone, he might be expected to be more of an offensive defenseman provide again that additional output for the team after Shea is now gone but looking at this as well too this is a player who wasn't like he just you know was feasting on the power play and the 5 on 5 numbers were atrocious when he was out there things were really good they had a lot of chances going their way defensively they weren't bleeding up a lot of chances in fact they looked pretty good defensively in that end too so I want to highlight the fact that Brent Burns is not somebody that I think is just getting overhyped because of his namesake he still is a very important player to what Carolina wants to do especially going forward for this season as he he is on a one-year deal, and the Canes are looking to get a positive you know, run for this final year. So then the final storyline is talking about do they still have depth. I know the season preview and what we've talked about already at this point may seem like Carolina is in a spot right now where they don't have a lot of guys and they're going to be very thin, but I still think they're in a really good spot despite their offseason losses. The blue line 
looks fine to me. I'm not really worried about that. I'm actually intrigued by Shane Gostas pair signing with the team. I'm looking at this and seeing something that could be very good for them. He played with them before, and over the past three seasons, he ranks 18th among defensemen for points. So having the familiarity and being a guy that could have a good year for the team when they really could use it as they lose guys like Brady Shea, especially, and I have a guy like Burns that we've already talked about that is older, feeling pretty good about that, as well as the fact that in net, they're probably set. They've got Freddie Anderson and Piotr Kachetkov. Now, looking at these two, Anderson had a good finish to the year. He didn't get to play a lot of games, but to close out the season, he was red hot. And then with Kachetkov, you already have a good feeling about where he's going to be going in his career. And I think at this point now, he's entering, what, his fourth season, I believe, in the NHL. He should be able to be in a situation where if Freddie goes down, he's able to handle a little bit bigger of a workload. I'm not necessarily concerned about that. He's played in the playoffs. He's got multiple seasons of NHL experience. And I just feel really good about where they're at right now. If Freddie's healthy and Kachetkov is healthy, I think they could still be a very, very good team. And then looking at their forwards, top six is going to be A-OK. -okay. And I'm not exactly worried about how the third and fourth lines will do. Whoever plays with Martin Hook and Stahl is going to be all right. As we saw last year, whenever they played together on lines, things went relatively well. They had scored the opposition, and they should be set there. They had the second best power play percentage in the NHL and the best PK percentage in the NHL. I'm not saying that they're going to be able to do that again because that is insane. Looking at this team, I still look at them and say they're probably going to be all right. You had guys like Andrei Svechnikov that missed like 20-something games last year. He's going to be back in the lineup and all these things. Maybe they'll get tested a little bit more because, again, they may not be as deep as they have been. But compared to a lot of other teams in the NHL, they're not exactly hurting. Two good goalies, a great blue line, and then a forward group that probably will still be able to get the job done. We know how they like to play. They like to outshoot teams. They like to be able to, you know, just limit chances defensively and whatnot. Those are all recipes for success, and I'm not exactly worried about the depth here. So, overall, what are my thoughts on the Carolina Hurricanes? Well, Carolina is a team that feels like they could be on the down and out. But at the same time, too, I don't want to hop off the train just yet. For the course of this channel, I feel like I've been really hyped on Carolina as a team that is dangerous and they could always be the team that goes on to win the championship because I appreciate what they've been able to do. And they feel like a team that has been there and done that because they have been. But I feel like now if I hop off, this would be the year they would actually go on to win the cup. Are they going to be tested? Yes. Could this year be a year where they finish with like 102 points or something like that? Yes. But I still see them being a playoff team. Even if they became a wild card team, they aren't a side that I'd like to play. And just looking at what they've been able to accomplish, I'm not going to say after one offseason that wasn't kind to of them, yeah, throw them out after everything they've done over the last six years. This is going to be the year where it just all falls apart. Good teams shouldn't fall apart within one season, and I think Carolina is more than a good team. So we'll see what happens here. What are your thoughts on the Carolina Hurricanes? Do you think they make the playoffs? Do you think that they go out there and do something crazy like win the President's Trophy? Do you think they win the Stanley Cup? Let me all that stuff down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. And eagle of hockey, all right. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.